Hello everyone, just me today. Miss Ray is back at school. Um, today is Thursday, so she went back last Friday. So five days in, so far so good. Absolutely loving it. Loves a new class, loves her new teacher. Was a bit worried about the new teacher. Absolutely loved last year's teacher. Mia was doing so well, got on so well with her. So the new teacher had really big boots to fill, but Mia's extremely happy. So she's happy, I'm happy. So it's all going really well at the moment. Um, so reason for today. I made a promise at the very, very start of our YouTube journey that I would share with you um, honest sort of opinions and stories about us, about our health, um, about how we got to where we are today. Um, and I want to start today at the very beginning. Um, this is probably the only one that I'm actually going to do without Mia because I think all of the others involve her in some way. Um, the beginning, obviously, there was no Mia. Um, she was the star. So I'm going to do this on my own without her today and then moving forward we will talk about Mia's epilepsy, we will talk about my heart, we'll talk about the effects that has on the family. So actually from Mia's point of view as well because that's quite important. I want to see how she feels about it or see how it's affecting her or, or how we manage it as a family. But today is about the start of our journey. And the start of our journey um, was extremely, extremely difficult. Um, back in February 2011, so before I even start, um, certainly not medically trained, certainly not professional in any capacity whatsoever. So I'm possibly pronouncing things wrong. I'm possibly saying the names of things wrong. Um, this is in no way at all advice to anybody or guidelines for anybody this is purely what happened to us and how I felt during the situation it, nothing more this this isn't to scare anybody this isn't to advise anybody this is purely my story that's it just wanted to put that out there so back in February 2011 we found out we were pregnant over the moon really excited um the emet part of my brain so my emetophobia part of my brain absolutely went into meltdown petrified of um all the things that you hear about pregnancy morning sickness nausea blah 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 um and i was fine none of it didn't get sick once absolutely perfect pregnancy was so smooth i can't honestly say i enjoyed it um I enjoyed the bond that I'd started to create with Mia. Um, I enjoyed um, the whole being pregnant and not necessarily the attention that it brought, but I liked that people noticed I was pregnant. Oh, when are you due? Like, I loved, I loved that side of it. I was really uncomfortable, hard to sleep, hot, swollen ankles. Didn't love any of that part of it. Um, but everything was so smooth, so smooth. We got halfway through and we were told that um, I had something called placenta previa, um, which is just where placenta is a bit low, blocking the birth canal. Potentially, it would mean that I would need to have a cesarean um, wouldn't be able to deliver naturally. Fine. Thousands of women have that. Absolutely fine with that. Not a problem. Um, a few months later, another scan. Oh, it's moved. It's moved further up. That happens sometimes as the bump gets bigger, the baby moves around. No need for a cesarean now. Everything's on course to go natural. Amazing. Um, another few weeks down the line, they found a little problem with my blood. Um, they thought that my blood was a little bit thicker than it should be just from one of my blood tests. Again, nothing out of the ordinary. Something quite normal that comes along with pregnancy. Um, didn't overly worry us. Um, hospital handled it really well, explained it all. Um, it just meant that I'd probably need extra, I think they're called Klexane, Klexane um, little injections that you just pop the top, needle comes out, do them in your tummy, your leg, top of your arms. I just need a few extra of them just to, to prevent blood clots. Absolutely fine. Not a problem. That was all on course to happen after I had the baby. Um, I was due on the 11th of the 11th of the 11th. Um, and on the 10th, I got up in the middle of the night, um, 
felt absolutely fine. Went to the toilet, as you do. Um, went to the toilet normally. Popped into the kitchen to make a drink. Didn't turn the light on, just went into the kitchen. Um, and I just felt this big gush. I thought, oh my God, my waters have broke. Turned the light on as quickly as I could and there was a sea of blood in the kitchen. Um, it had splashed up the worktops onto the wall. There was even some on the ceiling. It, it was like a car crash. Um, I think I just, I don't even think I had words. I think I just bellowed and screamed. And within seconds, Carl was at the door of the kitchen with trainers on, ready to go. Um, he didn't know what was happening. Whipped me in the car. We didn't even phone the hospital. I think it was all such a, a manic, oh my God, just just go. Um, got to hospital triage. By the time I got there, there was there was no bleeding. I had um, a little pad in my knickers and they looked at that and said, we actually think you've just had a show. So I explained, mm, I know I don't know any of this. I know it's my first time, but um, there was a lot of blood. Yeah, just a show. Different women have different types. We've, we've checked you over. Um, they checked the baby's heart rate. Heart rate was fine. Um, did all the normal stats that they would do on me, my blood pressure and... Uh, whatever I checked how swollen my ankles were my hands and that was it I didn't get offered at that stage a scan or um, even an internal examination nothing at all um, I believed everything that they said um, why wouldn't I first pregnancy that's it um, walked out of there went home and then on the Sunday night the same happened again off we rushed to the hospital. Um, this time I kind of found my voice a little bit more. I'd done a little bit of research online and convinced myself, actually, I don't think the first time was a show. Um, I'm, a, I'm a little bit worried. And I found my voice and I said, listen, if you're gonna tell me this is a show, you're lying. Because on Friday, I had what you told me was a show. Um, this can't be and I, I need some more answers. So a consultant come in, same checks again, um, but this time I did have an internal examination. Still at no point had I had a scan to see what was going on in my tummy. Um, the consultant that came in was absolutely lovely, he really put my mind at rest. He was like, listen, everything's fine, this is all normal. I know it's all scary, it's all different, but it is all normal. Um, and I think we'll just induce you in the morning. Um, you're a day overdue now by the time all this had happened you're a day overdue Let, let's just induce you it's like, okay perfect fine um and again sucked it in believed everything they said um i actually felt okay in myself as, as far as a heavily pregnant woman can feel okay um i had extremely bad backache but again you're pregnant you've got this huge life leeching off the front of you you expect to have backache so i didn't think anything of it i didn't think it was anything strange um next morning i did say to the doctor i actually think i'm in labor um i'm getting really bad cramps all around the bottom of my tummy and the bottom of my back is it possible to feel your labor in your back and he said well yeah he said a lot of people do feel it but you're not in labor and we are going to induce you okay um i had like a gel pessary gel um within minutes I was in full whack labour. It was like I'd literally been hit by a car, like from niggly backache to, oh my God, labour, um, contractions. I was adamant. I didn't want any drugs at all. I've, I've gone my whole life with probably being able to count on just two hands how many times I've taken even a paracetamol or ibuprofen. I, it's just not something I've ever, I just don't take medicine. I, it's not me. Um, and I put that in my birth plan, but I had put underline underneath in big capital letters, please ignore everything I say to you. If anything changes, if for my safety or the baby's safety, I need medication or I need any medical help at all, please scrunch up my birth plan and do what you need to do. Um, and subconsciously, maybe I knew that that, that would come into play. Um, we were in full swing in labour. Um, they came in and checked me. I'd got to six centimetres and I was in, in quite bad pain. And the lady said, um, the midwife, sorry, said to me, maybe your pain threshold isn't as high as, as you think it is. I said, it is high. Like, for me to be telling you that I'm at 10, 
other women other women are possibly a lot higher than I am like I am in really bad pain she suggested an epidural first of all I was like no 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 I seriously please I, I really don't want that and then the pain just overtook and I said you know what okay let's do that um they put that in and within minutes everything changed um Carl went home only really quickly grabbed a few bits to come back um and the midwife come in and examined me and said oh brilliant you've just reached seven centimeters everything's moving in the right direction sit tight won't be long I still had the same amount of pain even after the epidural um and I felt the only way I can explain it is I felt an explosion in my tummy um and my mum was sitting just at the end to the side of, of my bed and I said mum um something's really wrong and her initial was, oh, suck it up, you're seven centimetres, you're getting near of it, it's going to get worse, it, this is labour, this, this is what happens. And um, I think my face probably dropped and then she went into panic mode. Um, she could see that actually this, this wasn't right. Um, and at that point I said, Mum, I'm, I'm, this, isn't, uh, this isn't normal pain, um, I actually think I'm going to die. And my mum pushed the emergency button. And then my memory from that moment is a little bit blank for about a week. Um, I can remember sounds, I can remember smells and tastes. Um, but from here on, the story, I suppose, is other people's versions of the story that I've been told. Um, it's not my story because although it was me it happened to and it was me who was there, um, it wasn't me who was awake to tell the story or um, absorb it, to relay it. Um, from the minute we pushed the button, so my mum pushed the emergency button at six o'clock, 6 a.m. on the dot. Um, my first incision was at 6.04, so they got me into theatre. They cut me at 6.04 and Mia was born at 6.06. .06. It happened that quickly. Um, she come out flat. Um, there was no, there was no pulse, no breathing. Within minutes, they'd brought her around and she was absolutely fine. They'd done everything that they needed to do. They whipped her off to the SCABU unit, the, the special care unit upstairs, um, put her in a little incubator just, just to help her breathe in. And she had a little drip in her arm and she had all the necessary injections and um, she was absolutely fine. She was good as gold um, within minutes, absolutely no problem at all. And time passed and the clock was ticking and ticking and ticking and I think I could be a little bit wrong on timing but I think it was the first two hours. Um, after the first two hours, Cole, my husband, come out of the little waiting room, went up to me and said, I'm so sorry but can I see my wife yet? Like the baby come out ages ago, the baby's up in Skabu, I've been and seen the baby but she hasn't come back out, I thought she'd be okay by now. They said, oh, they're just taking their time stitching her up. She won't be much longer. Again, believe what they say, first baby, what do we know? Um, back into the waiting room he went and then another hour passed and my mum went out and said, I'm actually really worried now. This, this isn't normal. It doesn't take this long to stitch somebody up. Where is she? Um, and at that point they were told, we're going to get a consultant. They'll come and speak to you. Um, the consultant walked in the room and said, we're having a few complications. Um, she's not... Um, contract it her womb isn't isn't just stopping how we'd expect it to stop um and we've had a few problems with the placenta it's just taken a bit longer than normal but nothing to worry about back in the waiting room sit back down um and then quite a few hours passed um it wasn't until 2 30 that the consultant came in and asked Cole to sit down and he said to Carl please sit down I, I need to talk to you and Cole's first reaction is no no, not sitting down. In films, when they sit down, it's bad news. Just tell me what's happening, what's going on. He started to get quite angry. Um, he was really emotional and upset. He didn't know what was going on. There was really little communication. Um, and he was he was scared. And they said that I had had a placental abruption, which basically, for different women, it means a number of different things. So a placental abruption for me um, meant that my womb and my placenta had come away from each other. Um, I had a full abruption, so it was it shot away from the side of my womb and it was in 100 pieces. And as a midwife, they have to make sure 
that um, you've got all the bits of the placenta because leaving it behind can cause infection and whatever issues I'm not 100% sure but they have to make sure they've got it all and they couldn't do that with me because it was just shot into a million pieces and that was potentially the bang that I felt um, before I went unconscious and before they took me into theatre. So they'd explained this to Carl and they'd also explained that at this stage they'd done a number of procedures to prevent my womb from contracting because it wouldn't stop contracting and while it was contracting and my tummy was cut open from the caesarean, I was pumping the blood out as fast as they were trying to put the blood in. Um, by the time that they'd spoke to the doctors, Carl had already seen a motorbike arrive with additional blood that he knew was for me um, because they'd actually shut the unit. So they'd shut maternity. They were taking no additional mums at all. Um, the unit had been shut. Um, a sign had been put on the door to say where the nearest unit was or that they could use A&E if it was for triage um, and all the staff were actually in attendance in my theatre or helping the ladies that they already had in the unit before they managed to shut. Um, so they sat him down, told him what was going on, told him that they had tried doing a procedure where they stitch your room together, almost like an American football, round one way, round the other way, to hold it together. And I had pushed through that, or my womb had, had pushed through that. The stitches didn't hold and I was still bleeding. Um, they had then tried um, putting little um, sort of metal coils on the arteries that supply the blood flow to the womb to try and cut that flow off to, to stop that from pumping through. Again, I, I burst that and that, that didn't prevent it. Um, and then I went into something that I think I'm right in saying they called DIC. Um, my organs had started to fail and started to shut down because of the trauma that my body was then under. Um, so they'd explained all this to Carl and they said that they um, weren't giving up, but it was extremely touch and go. And that if there was any family that they wanted to come and see me now would be the time they couldn't promise that they'd be able to come in but potentially um to support carl and to see the baby um it, it would be now bring them now so carl obviously phoned a, a few people um they joined him in the waiting room they, they come in temporarily um and he asked if he could see me and he was told that it probably wouldn't be best at that point to see me, um, he certainly wouldn't be allowed to enter the theatre. Um, they put a screen up to hide my body, but just so he could see my face, and they they let him look at me for a little window. So he managed to do that. Um, and then I think we we were probably another few hours um, past that point when a another consultant came into the room that Cole hadn't met until then. And he come in and he said to Carl, um, we've put her on a ventilator. Um, she's on life support um, and I've done a hysterectomy. I've removed the womb. I can't stop the contractions, so I took it out. I'm so sorry. She won't have any more children, but I'm hoping that this is going to save her. Um, Carl didn't care. It didn't matter to him. We had this beautiful baby up in Skaboo um, and bless my dad. My dad stayed with her the whole time. Um, further down my um, birth plan, after the whole um, drug thing, further down was once Mia's delivered, um, I didn't want nurses or midwives to be the first ones to feed her or change her balm or any of that. I wanted it to be me and Cole. Cole wouldn't leave the waiting room. He he was fixed on those theatre doors. So my dad did it. My dad went up, gave me her first bottle, put her in her first outfit, was there for all the little tests that they were doing, um, did her first bum change. He, That was his priority. He was me up. Cole and my mum were me. Um, so yeah, a few more hours passed. We reached five o'clock and at ten past five, I come out of theatre. Um, the hospital that actually had Mia in, the maternity in the main building are, are really separate. So um, they actually had to close the road, the, the main road that runs through the hospital so that they could wheel me out on my, my bed. Um, 
all the doctors and nurses had little like red rucksacks on and they were running alongside my bed to, to whip me over to intensive care um, I got over to intensive care, stayed on life support. Um, at that point, Cole was told, we're not really sure and until we wake her up what the damage is. We know she can't have any more children. We know we've taken away her womb. Or her, um, uh, we know we've done the hysterectomy. We know that she has lost a lot of blood. I'd actually had 28 units transfusioned or transferred or a 28 unit transfusion um not that i had that amount of blood in my body i had pumped out so much that they had to constantly replenish and uh 28 units all in all plus products um platelets and whatever else my notes say um so there i was intensive care tubes wires um everything coming out of everywhere no one was allowed in into intensive care because of um infection control um and at that point, Carl went back up to Skaboo. He knew I was out of theatre and um, what would be would be at this point. We didn't know how I was going to wake up. Obviously, they had warned him that my brain had been starved of oxygen for quite some time. Um, so they wasn't sure what effect it would have on me um, when they woke me up. Um, but he knew I was in there. I was out of theatre and I was as safe as I was going to be in that moment. So his priority turned to Mia. Off he went to Skaboo and he was there with her for a couple of days. Um, the first time they removed my tube, um, my breathing didn't regulate itself, so the tube went back. Um, the second time they removed my tube, I woke up and I had no idea I'd had a baby. Not a clue. Um, I had no idea how much time had passed. Um, I actually thought I was still pregnant and it was all very, very confusing and surreal and um, I didn't recognise where I was anymore, I wasn't in maternity where I'd left, um, I didn't recognise any of the staff, they, they were nobody that I'd met on the run up to what had happened um, and then the most beautiful consultant, her name was Mo. She had a shaved head and she was just, she had just the most perfect, beautiful face arrived at the end of my bed. Um, telling the, the story in order, um, this bit won't make sense to you, but you'll understand why in a moment. Um, I couldn't actually see Mo. I didn't know it was her until she started speaking. As soon as she opened her mouth, I knew exactly who she was. And she explained to me what had happened in theatre. She said, we've got your daughter. She's up in Skaboo. She is beautiful. She is healthy. Um, she is big. She was a big baby. Um, she's with your husband, your mum, your dad. Um, and you're in intensive care. You've been on a life support machine. And I've got so much I need to tell you. Now's not the time. But your baby is okay. And you will be too. Um... And that was it. She was gone. And then they gave me a phone, a, a phone, and then I could hear Cole's voice and he was telling me all about Mia. And um, I couldn't, I, I couldn't talk. There was nothing, nothing coming out, partly because of all the tubes and everything. Um, where they tried to incubate me, they broke a few of my teeth. I had all cuts and stuff on my tongue. Um, I, was in a, I was in a bad way. Um, but I was adamant I was gonna go and meet that baby. So they whipped me in a wheelchair and off I went to high dependency and high dependency was back over in maternity. And it was from that point that they brought Mia in and we had Cole's bed, my bed, Mia's cot and a desk with a nurse 24 hours a day just sitting there staring at me. Um, I was on 15 minute observations um, for quite a few days. And the midwife was absolutely fantastic right it was one during the day one during the night she was amazing um she just sat there she chatted to us she kept checking me she she was she was brilliant um i had morphine on a drip so i just used to push a little button every time i needed pain relief i had drainage tubes coming out my tummy i had tubes coming out my neck i had cannulas in my arms in my hands um it was tough really really tough and I think in the moment, 
I had absolutely no idea. I think I was probably off my face on the amount of drugs that I had. I don't even think I felt pain. Um, I can't remember actually feeling uncomfortable or pain um, at any point. There's not, there, that's not part of the memory is pain. Um, so the pain management must have been amazing. Um, and yeah, they put this baby on my chest and my initial thought was, you need to get her off. I didn't want to hold her. Sorry. Sorry. Um, I think that, that really upset Carl um, because he thought that maybe the time I'd spent away from her, I'd lost precious bonding time. But it wasn't that. Um, I actually couldn't see. I'd lost my eyesight completely. And um, I honestly had on heart believed that I was going to die still. Um, I thought that this was the start of the end. And um, if I let Mia get to know me, um, I could be breaking her heart if she got used to my smell or anything like that and then I was gone um, I'd make life harder so I didn't want to hold her and then um, the following morning Carl was obviously really upset by it all um, the following morning sorry for being so graphic but I sneezed and I can only describe it as a egg literally the size of an egg um, blood clot come out of my nose and landed on my chest and the moment it come out I could see the clock at the end of my bed and Carl whipped it off my chest ran out screaming to the doctors like oh my god this has just come out my wife what what is this um, and they come in and said you are so stupid if you told us we could have drained your sinuses um, but potentially my tubes and stuff was, was blocked by the blood that had pulled there from the surgery and everything that happened to me and um, had blocked my eyesight. And as soon as that was cleared, I could see. And then from that moment, the rest is history. I just got better and better. The drainage tubes come out, the neck tube come out, the centre line come out, the cannulas come out, the catheter come out. Um, I got moved from high dependency up to the ward. I started to move around a bit. I used the word move quite lightly, actually. I shuffled around a bit. Um, I got to go and have a shower. Um, I got to eat. Um, and then eventually it was time to come home. And it was a long, a long, long struggle. And it's from that point I remember the pain um, because I refused to, to go home on morphine. I wasn't going to do that. I wasn't going to be... Um, light-headed or grog groggy around the baby uh, I didn't want to risk that I, I took the pain and from that point we went home and yes I've had a hysterectomy yes I can't have any more children um, and yes I have got a heart condition that is potentially from the surgery because at one point I did a rest um, in the surgery my heart did stop um, so potentially the, the problems that I have now are um, because it almost didn't reset itself properly, which is kind of how the, the um, cardiac, uh, the cardiologist has explained it to me. Um, so yes, I have got those effects from it. But as you have all have seen, I have got a fantastic eight year old who is doing so well. Um, I know I know how lucky both me and her were. Um, thousands of women. I haven't got figures. I'm not pretending to know the facts and figures, but thousands of women every year suffer placental abruptions um, at early stages of pregnancy and lose their baby to miscarriage because of it. Thousands suffer it later stages, still have to deliver their babies, but lose their babies. Um, and also, like me, suffer it in labour. And most of them aren't as fortunate as me. They either lose their life or they lose their baby. And somehow, some, God only knows how, somehow we are both here. 
yes, we're here with a few medical problems. But what's that in the scheme of things? We got through it. Um, and the reason I'm telling you guys is so you know our story. So you know where we begun. But also to raise awareness. Everyone hears of um, preeclampsia, um, gestational diabetes, um, all the other little problems that people suffer during pregnancy. But I had never, ever heard the word placental abruption until it happened to me. Um, and I had never realised how many people miscarry because of it or lose babies to d in deliveries because of it. And it's a thing. It's a serious, scary thing. And I did not tick one box that put me in the risk category for it um again i could be a little bit out with my actual figures and and um facts but um it would normally be somebody who's had multiple pregnancies already um somebody who takes recreational drugs a smoker a drinker um somebody who is higher risk because of age so slightly older mums um I was under 30. I've never smoked. I've never drunk alcohol. I have never taken any recreational drugs. I hardly even take medicated drugs. Um, I'm fit and healthy. I wasn't morbidly obese. Yeah, I wasn't the smallest, but I, I certainly wasn't um, in the scary obese category. Um, I was healthy and I had a pretty normal pregnancy. Um, I believe the hospital saved my life. They did, 100%, they did. They did everything they could for me that day and more from the minute I come out of surgery. They, to give Carl a bed in the same room as us, to let him stay with us. Um, absolutely fantastic. The nurses, the consultants, the porters, the people who ran the blood, amazing. Every single one of them was amazing. But there's still that part of me that thinks if I had been scanned, on that very first day that I had that bleed, this may not have happened. And you can't if what's and maybes, who knows? Maybe I'm completely wrong. But just follow your gut. If you think there's something wrong, don't just walk out and take what they say. Keep questioning. Um, so sometimes good things come out of bad things. And I've got Mia. So who cares that I can't have any more bonuses? I don't have periods. Um, so there's always an up, I suppose. But yeah, I want to raise awareness and I want people to know what placental, placental abruption does to your body, what it can do. Um, but more importantly, I wanted you guys to know our journey. So that's it. See you soon.